Hello everyone, Chainsaw Ninja here, and today we have a pretty special video. I have an upcoming game called Blups. It's a little bow PvP game. And while I was gone and out of town, an unofficial tournament was hosted for this game. And I got some footage for uh, what this game might look if a tournament was hosted for it. So I was going to just go through this footage, share some thoughts I had as we go and just kind of enjoy it with you guys to see uh, what this game looks like when it's played seriously and what strategies might be evolving. They were going to be playing on Hex. So these get, we only have one point of view. It's going to be through Aiden Monster right here. This team is pretty much the expected winners. Um, uh, blue team is definitely the underdogs in this situation. And they're going to be playing on Hex. I think Hex is a pretty good choice if you're an underdog to try to strike to. So the they're definitely um, winning the counter picks here because it's a simpler map. So so let's see how it goes for them. Okay, so immediately our point of view, Aiden Monster fails just this jump this is a really big deal and i'm actually going to it and an even bigger deal is that he's sitting here and he fails his jump and nothing really happens this is super huge here's why is if we look at kind of like a diagram for how Hex looks, you can kind of see it as like a six segment map. It's kind of like this slightly rectangular map. And uh, here's where the flags and spawns are set up. And because of this, if you spawn here as blue team, uh, you naturally obviously own this square, but you also directly can take this square and can directly take this square and therefore, this is like usually what blue will control, and red has the same thing going on here. Like, you naturally own this, but you can be the first to take this space, and naturally control most of this. Now, as you might have, like, known, if you've ever played this game, the only way that you can take this space, so let's say I'm spawning from blue, the only way you can take this space is if you do this jump. That's the only way to take this square right here. So this is like one of the squares. This is one of the squares. But the only way to take it is to jump through this, this window. And if you fail this jump, that's really bad. And it's really bad because the default is to put one person through the window because it can't be stopped. Now the other person can come through here and try to shoot you coming through the window, but this is basically the only spot they can do it. If they play too much over here, they can't see you. If they come play up here, they can't see you. Really, if you come play on top of here through the ladder, this window is blocked. They might get across on you, but you're a lot more protected. Um, unless if they explicitly play this neutral zone, which they probably will. And it goes and if you don't see anyone even failing that jump, uh that's that's kind of like you don't you the other team might be doing something weird or they screwed up what's also worth noting is well you're like well why don't you just commit to it because you like you've screwed up the timing at this point they might be there ready to shoot you and you don't come over to this window too much because this opens you up to a ton of angles like maybe you can pre-fire through here but you're in a bad spot so let's go back to the youtube video and I would actually say Aiden plays this extremely well. He fails this jump, then takes a second to see what the other team was doing, see if he can win this fight now that he's missed his timing. The fight doesn't really occur. He pops open this window to see if he can take a fight here. Um, Tanner, uh, the guy on the left, isn't ready for it. Tanner's not ready for this fight because he didn't see anyone there immediately, and he's a little bit late to the party. So he takes a shot at Tanner, actually gets it, and then jumps across the window. This is so smart. We can't see where his teammate's at, 
right now because it's only his point of view. I really wish we had better footage for this, but we know his teammate's probably somewhere around here. He's probably somewhere, like, let me bring up the uh, paint diagram again. Where is it? He's probably somewhere around uh, the flag area. So now, now their control is pretty weak. They've given up almost everything. This is actually pretty bad. But they have a very solid line here and a pick. So the enemy team has like all of this control, but they only have one person. So let's see how they play off of that. This is so smart. He literally just... <laughs> he literally just, like, is, says, screw it. There's no one, there's no one uh, guarding their base. He just goes straight into their spawn zone. And puts so much pressure on them right here. And this basically... So they play the numbers advantage and say, like, okay, we don't have map control. But they immediately, like, capitalize on their pick by taking just like an absurd amount of map control based on this like one pick they're like okay we know that they actually don't have this furthest square so they take this and just keep going now he's obviously in their spawn so he runs it although he touches almost every single square and area you can in this map just knowing that like they're just down a player and this pressure is so great you see him run in, beta radiation. He see he even screws up his jump. You could have done this better. Beta radiation sees him, turns around to try to deal with him, and you see in chat, he dies to his teammate. So we haven't even seen his teammate yet. His teammate has been holding down the fort, playing very smart, and him taking this space lets Rubix get this kill because. We can assume that Beta Radiation was either distracted or just straight up not looking at his teammate. And then we can see his teammate. Wait, where is his teammate? Right there taking his space. Now we know Tanner's respawned and is behind him. So now they need to get out of here. But now he has a teammate that's backing him up. He didn't just take this space solo. It's now also on his teammate to take that kill. And once again, they're in a 2v1. Beta being able to, unable to, like, stop the, uh, incoming pressure has put a ton of pressure now on Rubix. Now, Beta Radiation actually respawns and kills Rubix. So, he has a choice here. Does he, he sees Tanner in the winter, in the window. Like, he's, he sees him right here. He's about to die. He's not glowing, though, so Tanner doesn't get the perfect pre-fire. So, does he turn around and fight? No, he does some movement just to perfectly, like, avoid the sight lines of the windows. And even though it's a 2v1, he's glowing, they're chasing him, he still gets it. But beta radiation screws up here. So, now, we know <laughs> that, like, basically they're controlling their base, uh, because he's on the flag and his teammate respond. But they're not even looking, they probably don't even have sight lines on the upcoming attack. Both of their, uh, the blue members are right behind them. And we turn around and guess what? We literally see both of them. We see Beta right here. And then we see Tanner people. And if you're actually paying super close attention, if you saw it, um, you can actually see, I, I noticed that you could see Tanner cross here for like a second. Yeah, there he is. You can see uh, Tanner uh, running. <laughs> so he turns around and he gets all the info, and now it's a double team fight. Now, they're playing pretty standard. Rubix is just coming out to uh, help uh, assist his partner. He's doing it um, the slowest way possible. He doesn't go up ladders. He doesn't go forward or anything aggressive. This is basically the most stable position to take. They're just now on the defense. They've scored, but they've lost all the map control. That's kind of the nature of Capture the Flag. The problem here is Beta Radiation is just way too far forward. <laughs> He's not ready to take this fight with uh, uh, Aiden, who we're like looking through because... I don't know, he's just not looking there, he's distracted by Rubix, and now he's taking a straight up 2v1 fight, and he dies immediately. So what should Tanner do here? What should the last blue guy do here? 
Well, he either needs to kill Aiden right here and really isolate this fight. Like, we see this, like, big... He, like, doesn't see Rubix yet because he has, like, some cover from Rubix with this. And he can isolate this Aiden one. So he either needs to retreat and make sure they don't get um, sieged again. But more optimally, he wants to try to isolate this Aiden fight. And if Aiden falls back, try to isolate the Rubix fight. He just wants to isolate a fight and get a pick here. So when his teammate respawns, it's a 2v1, and they can keep the attack. If he falls back here, he's giving up all map control, and it's still like a 2v1. Very scary. And Aiden now has armor. So their attack would be really bad. Tanner, at the very minimum, wants to hit Aiden and get his armor off. Now, Aiden's super smart. He jumps down here, making Tanner... He really baits Tanner, because, like... The only way Tanner can, like, aggress here is if he walks forward, and he does. And this is so bad, because now he's, like, out on an island, and he absolutely needs a pick. But Rubix can walk forward, and he doesn't know. See, like, Aiden's just not even giving it to him. He jumps down, then hides in cover, and Rubix just walks forward and gets the pick. Aiden basically is just setting Rubix up to just... Get kills because everyone's looking at Aiden and Rubik just walks forward and just shoots someone who's not even looking his way. I mean, they probably see him like last second, but they're not ready for it. Now Aiden just gets this really good read. Understanding the time. Like, this is just absurd. I don't think he sees like a beta right here. He just is so ready going up this ladder because ladders are kind of scary. Everyone can hear it. They're easy to pre-fire. And he just, he's just so ready to shoot. And now, once again, Tanner's, like, they've just taken map control. It's literally just a complete recreation of what happened before. Tanner's looking in the wrong way, and and now Aiden's behind here. He puts a spawn point, and Tanner actually does fall back, but now he's in a 2v1. His teammate's probably going to respawn soon. We see the spawn point get killed because it was in a bad spot. But that reveals where beta is, and we just saw beta radiation there. And once again, Aiden fails to jump. Aiden just cannot jump to save his life. He's making good plays, but his movement is terrible. But they're so distracted on the flag holder, Rubix does get a pick on beta radiation. Rubix is so good right there. He, he probably shouldn't have slowed down for that. This is... Like, he's just risking everything right there. There's no reason to... And Rubix cleans it up anyways, but... You can just tell that they're taking the space, and Rubix is, like, Aiden's just putting all this pressure, taking the flag and running forward, and they feel the need to attack Aiden. Like, even in that fight, they were attacking Aiden with the flag, and Rubix is just behind them, shooting them. Aiden doing such a good job. Once again, can't move to save his life. And now the same thing. They're in a defensive position, but now he has two armor, and they just got kills. They can probably aggress here. What do they do? They immediately aggress. They see that... See, think about it. What did they just see? What did they just see? Let's go back to paint for just a second. They just saw... They just saw... Uh, sorry, my paint's being weird. They just saw that Tanner was, like, right here. And Bader's probably, like, over here somewhere. So, like, they're kind of, like, and they're, like, trapped over here, but they realize, hey, they're, like, scared and defending. And they just push the line. Aiden just takes this square, and Rubix just takes this square. Unassisted. Uh, and we see why that doesn't work out for him. Like, good concepts. Good concepts. They just um, didn't execute it properly. They just immediately see that they have the entire space. Like, both blue guys are... Only in one square right now. Uh, Rubix fails a spawn point, a cheeky spawn point uh, location. He's trying to place it inside that wall. And he just walks away. Like, Rubix really should be waiting for his teammate here. Like, he's literally knowingly poking into two guys. He's just feeling himself too much. And he immediately dies for it. So, they can, Red Guy's making some bad moves here, too. But... Aiden can still aggress and feel confident here, knowing Rubix had that spawn point. So, like, they lost that space, or seemingly lost that space, but they had a spawn point. This is the only spawn point 
you get it on a two kill streak. So far, there actually aren't that many two kill streaks, despite Red seeming to have all this momentum. They're not just curb stomping their team, the other team, and on like a seven kill streak. They've just nonstop taken space. Now Aiden's about to make the same mistake. Actually gets the kill. He's so lucky there. Beta radiation. Okay, this is just stupid. Tanner uh is trying to capitalize on Rubik's mistake. Isn't expecting Aiden to be this far forward. Just this is unlucky. I uh, I mean, yeah, Tanner just gets unlucky here. Beta in a good spot. He needs to just play cover. Intentionally drops down. This really limits his movement options. And then he plays in like a super bad corner. Don't play right here. He should have tucked in. He should have just stayed up here. But if he does fall down, it's best to like tuck in and force this person to expose themselves as much as possible. And he doesn't even really. He probably... Yeah, he just gets this kill. Spam. He puts down two really bad traps. But he has a grenade. So usually... If you know someone just got a grenade off of this situation, this is his fourth kill. He's on a four kill streak. You know it's his fourth kill because he hasn't died yet. Despite how bad he's playing, he has not died yet. Or how bad his movement is. So the other team should know he has a grenade. And you always throw it basically at uh, the windows over here because this covers your exit. Rubik's once again completely following up. He, he took his spawn point and he didn't come up here or be slow at all. He's right there with his teammate. Here comes in the grenade. I think it's a little mistimed, but it kind of doesn't matter because uh, they needed to be there uh, and get grenaded, or they just lose it anyways. And they either didn't have the respawn one ready. I mean, look at that perfect hex play. Just perfect. Like, it's this is like one of those things where it's like Hex seems like a small, insignificant map. But it, it goes to show that if you really understand area control and you're really capitalizing on space, it can be quite deep. And you can just curb stomp someone. Like, Aiden basically got a 4 0 in three flag captures off of honestly pretty subpar play. He just held W. He just knew when to not peek and when to just, like, not stop running. And it really let Rub Rubik's basically went 5-4 with most of the time his enemies distracted, looking the other way. I don't think this team played incredible. I think they just had a super solid strategy. And Tanner got caught out a couple of times, Beta caught, got caught out just, like, twice, and that was game. That was literally game. Let's move on to the towers. I I didn't really see this match. I was more prepared for the hex match. I didn't really see this one as much. So let's kind of like re. re so that the other one I kind of knew I was going to say this one. I'm going to react to more as we go. So once again, they're just splitting towers. Is a let's open up paint. It's it's single mirrored instead of double mirrored, which means the flags are across from each other and the spawns are across from each other. So generally, you're going to have this conflict as both teams run for the flag. And then you're going to make a mad dash for it once you capture. So controlling like this area is pretty easy. But controlling like this lane right here is super hard. So already we kind of so we already see their positioning. We haven't seen the enemy so far. But so far, Red's positioned themselves to try to... Rubik's has taken this, like, long, sneaky path over here, which usually goes through here. And uh, Aiden's going through this. So they're doing kind of a split to put pressure on whoever's coming... So, like, blue members are obviously going to be coming up here. And now that they're doing these pathways, it's like they can put pressure on them. It's the idea here. But the other problem is, like, if this guy dies to, like, this team... Like, Blue's just gonna have, like, all the momentum, and the person, like, over here is, like, super weak. So they, like, so they run forward, and then kind of stop, because they now realize that they need to, like, regroup. They can't let one of their guys just fall and put all the pressure on the other one. So they slow down. They've taken a ton of space so far. They've literally just held W, and then they stop. 
And look at where blue team is. Blue team, literally barely out of their base and are not in good angles. They're able to double team Tanner here and it doesn't even go out very well. So now we know blue is rushing. Blue should theoretically be a... So there's like a wall on the far left side. So over here is like a wall. But each team has like a wall basically right here. And you can shoot it and break it. So a big strategy is if you kind of win the team fight like blue did, you just push here. And you could push into the base and attack the flag. But you also really want to attack this wall. And take some time to really like put this pressure on the opposing team because you're probably going to have to fight them again so you just want to make these routes for yourself and set up positioning to like quelch the defensive push as like red like now scrambles to try to protect themselves or regain mid control and you're going to be waiting for them so they've lost so red's like in a bad spot but blue needs to prove that they can capitalize on it so let's see what blue does. So red just straight up runs mid. This is crazy. So basically, like, they're just saying, we're going to put as much pressure on you as you just did on us. Because it's only one person. We It's only beta. So it's now totally on beta to go put this pressure. And we're just going to run mid and try to 2v1 the respawner. And just ignore the flag carrier. But Aiden doesn't overcommit to the mid push, and despite once again playing pretty bad, he gets him. I mean, I think it's on. I think at a certain point, like I think at, I think at this point, Bader should have seen him and had some strategy. Cause like running down here, like this is just a death trap. Like he's just. It seems like he either somehow didn't see him or had some misnotion that like he was just gonna get out of here in time so but he got the flag to mid um it, i don't think tanner's dead here so if tanner wins this fight on rubik's beta actually might have like won them a flag by getting it to mid because tanner could retrieve it but i don't see tanner or um rubik's over here at all so rubik's has taken a lot of space tanner's backed up it seems oh he's pushed forward we'll see what, what option he took and now they're together i think tanner's in their base i think tanner and them just ran together but now see this is the power of being together now he's cut off now like let's see what's going on right here like because this is so tricky because he's, like, cut off. It's a 2v1. He's glowing. So, like, blue has, like, the entire advantage. They just took the flag, and they're coming here. And they just respawned, and they're coming here. And meanwhile, there's just, like, one lone red guy who's, like, super scared. But he's safe for the moment. He's safe for the moment, and he has a respawner coming and pinching their flag holder, who's also glowing. So it's kind of on beta to come either like stop this respawner to peek him or it's on the guy who literally is glowing with the flag and has the most to lose to make a play. So they have the advantage on blue here, but they need to prove something. And I actually remember what happens here. So he sees where beta's at. Now beta can run upstairs and peek him like a million options here. He hasn't really lost his options. And that's what most people would do. And he just gets totally pre fire <laughs> That's actually crazy and super unlucky for Beta. Beta just jumping out there or, like, pushing and trying to play with Tanner was the smart play. Because you actually see, like, even though Beta just totally gets pre-fired right here, like, he's basically taking a 2v1 fight. Like, Tanner's peeking him at almost the exact same time. Like, slight miscommunication. But it's only because Aiden backed up so much into this corner, which has only screwed him more for this fight. But here we come with our respawner. You see a grenade coming from Rubik's. Now Aiden just gets grenaded. I, I mean, Tanner just gets grenaded. 
it's like he didn't deal like the worst case scenario. This is the worst case scenario for blue. They didn't play fast enough and deal with the respawner. They just overly focused the uh they just overly focused um this pink guy. They pushed and they just kind of lost for it. Like once again, Rubik's just getting kills because someone has their back to him. He's coming out here just killing this guy as he runs away. And over here, to, uh, Aiden's just anchoring, just letting people peek into his sight lines. I think this just shows how smart Red was playing. They won this tournament, by the way. But I think it just goes to show how smart they were playing. That even when they're in an objectively bad situation, they use the like space and resources they have to try to cling open an opportunity. Like, they... If Aiden just tried to run forward and panic, or panic took a fight when he saw Bader on staircase, they'd probably lose this. He just plays time and waits for his team to respawn, and uses the small area he has to, like, know that they can't attack him immediately. It's so well played. And then, after it, this is trivial. And he gets a spawn point off of it. And they're gonna get an armor piece. And, more importantly... They probably just tilted blue. I like I'm sure blue is just super mad right now. Okay, now they're just running okay. Let's back up. Now they're just running mid. I think they have too much confidence. I mean blue should have spawned by now. I think a blue guy just rent in their base. Like beta's been like rushing. So now Tanner's on defense here. He's He's looking out over mid and Aiden just Okay, Aiden's getting too cocky here. Although, he now knows he's in a 1v1 with Bader, and he is a spawn point here. Bader's not ready for the spawn point. Tanner's there. I feel like Blue's playing smart. Okay. I feel like here's Blue's problem. Blue's playing smart, but they're not playing off of each other. So, like, this is crazy that, like, someone on blue saw that, like, red got cocky and was just, like, playing just, like, fast forward. And, like, Tanner literally just comes and just takes the flag. But the problem is, in taking the flag, he reveals that there's only one person over here at most, because it's a 2v2. And he's revealing that he's vulnerable. Like, he has no idea where anyone is on mid. And it's, like... He doesn't play the lame strat of just, like, he could have just gone on top of, like, their base over here and tried to get a pick. Or just played, like, a rat and just hung out here if they stole the flag and tried to, like, wait for his teammate to pressure them. Knowing that, like, he's camping their flag area and his teammate will put on pressure if he dies or if he just, like, chases. But instead he takes the flag and it really limits his options because the only thing is he can run away. And he's lucky that Aiden even takes the flag and reveals their same plan. But now they're just, like, split up. Like, if if Beta gets a kill here, he's still chasing. And if Tanner gets a kill here, he's still pushing into Aiden. Like, it, it's not a terrible plan, but it basically forces them to get a kill. Something that's realistic, but if either of them falters, they probably lose this interaction. So they run forward. Tanner, like, just immediately dies here. Taking space. I don't know why he doesn't just, like, slow... They don't slow down a little bit. Like, holding that, like, lookout is generally kind of scary, but they're just jumping off of it. It's like, they're not getting info. They're not making... They're not really playing strategically, so they're not playing for info at all. Even for themselves. Now, this is a 2v1. I think one of the reasons Tanner's jumping out here is it's a 2v1. So Bader's probably right behind him. He just immediately dies, though. I don't know why Aiden doesn't just grenade the wall here. He doesn't do it. He runs in. He takes... He should be expecting... He should be expecting Beta to be here, pushing forward. I know his teammate has a spawn point, but... It hasn't died yet, so they should be expecting Beta to just run forward after he killed... Because, like, Bader just kills Rubix. No, this is just a bad play from Aiden. He, he should grenade this wall, create some space, and then pressure the last guy coming in. Because he knows Rubix has a spawn point over here, and they're about to 2v1 take the flag. And, uh... 
Rubix respawns and kills beta radiation. He just does like a really good play. <laughs> no, that's this is sloppy. And and they die for it. They actually die for it. They they play so cocky right here that they die for it. And Rubix just once again, I think Rubix just does he he has a spawn point that gets him a kill. And he gets a double kill, which lets him once again. If you didn't catch what happened right here, this is insane. He gets shot. And we don't see it, but he puts his spawn point on the like ground right before he dies. So he spawns on top of the flag and refetches it. <laughs> this is just stupid. This is just stupid. And uh yeah, Rubik's just hero plays here. This is just terrible. This is just terrible. Blue played correctly and red just lucked out. And I mean this is in a so now we have to ask the question is like what should blue be doing here? And what they should not be doing is getting tilted. This is like ma this is like I think point for them. I think if they lose this, this like entire match is over. So they need to calm down and just anchor blue. Get some picks, reset. They also know Rubix has armor. So they're just inherently at a disadvantage right here. Because it's going to take three shots from them and only two shots from the attackers. So they need to cheese out a shot here. And we kind of see it. Like, Beta's hanging out on top. He's, like, don't play right here. You literally have cover. You literally have cover. You literally have cover. I think they're on full tilt right now. They're Beta's been going incredibly fast. And he's not even coming to the speed. It's they're, they're hesitating. And he doesn't even die. He should have died there 10 out of 10 times. Oh, man. <laughs> Dies to his own grenade. And Rubik's kills Tanner, and this should be GG. It's a uh, no one alive. Rubik's just got a spawn point. I think he probably still has his armor. They have flag. Rubik's doesn't have his armor. He had traded. Tanner double kill. Okay, now this is like you can turn this into momentum. You know Rubik's had a spawn point. But he wasn't in their base yet. He shouldn't have got a spawn point down. It at most is on mid. A random grenade. Oh, Rubik's got a grenade out right before he dies. Gets one kill. Beta gets the respawn spawn point kill on Rubik's. So now they don't have armor. They don't have map control. Beta should have the advantage here. And Tanner is respawning. With a spawn point in hand, they should be able to see, like, throw out a good counterattack here. This is not lost. This game is very momentum-based. Once again, Aiden, just not using util. Like, this is just terrible. This is just fucking terrible. Like, I know Red wins this, but this is terrible. He should be walling this. He has three walls. He hasn't used his walls for attack. Or he should be trapping right here. Or trapping right here. Or trapping r over here. Or just any traps whatsoever. He's just been carrying these traps around the map. Traps are another way to just hold space when you're not there or even not alive. And he's just walking forward. He seems to have no real plan of how he's going to use this utility. Just immediately dies. I don't even remember what happens here. They should lose this. And they do. Right? Right? Oh! It's the walls. Beta wasn't confident jumping through the window. And he probably didn't have walls on him. So they were able to pinch him. And have their own attack. And now we have some traps. Why are... Like, once again, this is so stupid. Like, put the traps by the wall. Like, the, like, the wall is, 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 is just giving you, like, the best trap spot ever. Um, The traps don't even get a kill. Either because the person had spawn in vault or because they were just terrible. Zero out of ten traps. But he just runs so fast that, like... And I think, uh, at this point, Blue's pretty shook. Beta died super late there. Um, and Tanner just got caught up with Rubix and boom, Red wins. Boom, Red wins.
interesting um as far as strategy goes and play goes this is pretty this is pretty pretty early days let's see what the stats were aiden not aiden and rubik's really not going that hard i know on hex it looked like they went hard but like 10 9 and 7 6 they're only plus two in kills here they had six flag steal attempts so they had a 50 percent success rate I think Bait and Tanner should feel like if I was like if they stuck together as a team, I don't think they are. I think this is like early days. They're just messing around. But if you this was an established team, like you should be like asking yourself, like, if we had four flag steal attempts, how do we convert better? Like, should we have just not taken the flag? Should we have like been there together? Should we have played a little bit slower, a little bit faster? Should we have waited to get utility? Um, if you take the flag four times and zero of them are conversions, and you're not even, like, and you're only negative two on kills, that's probably because you're not, um, controlling space as well as you, you were supposed to be. But, well played for both teams. I actually saw some really smart ideas. I think Tanner came in clutch. I think Rubik's, uh, like, for the second flag on towers just absolutely just hero played it they played terrible in rubik's just he just went stupid but outside that i think red lily just uh had the better strategy here and that's really cool to see that that was like the determining factor so yeah really hopeful for these games or really hopeful for the future of this game thanks anyone who tuned into this see you next time